wheeling east after sealing the police pockets, the 1st Canadian Army commences a tremendous drive for the River Seine. With the 7th German Army in disorganized place, the tactics are to account for as many as possible of the depleted divisions. Canadian armor and infantry press forward in an all-out pursuit to bring them to bay at the Seine. French natives hail their liberators as our carriers forge down the open road. Loyal Frenchmen are quick to lay hands on the collaborators and to deal with them summarily. Hardly have our advance parties passed by before civilians commence moving their belongings back to their homes. In their headlong flight, the enemy has not had time to set mines or booby traps. The landscape is littered with abandoned equipment, which in many cases finds its way into some peasant cottage. Even ducks fatten themselves up for the victory meal. Farm carts and horses were commandeered by the retreating army. All means of escape were attempted in the flight to the German border. Our planes blasted them, leaving behind only good Germans, dead Germans. As the drive nears the river, the terrible effect of our artillery and aerial bombardment becomes apparent. Mechanized vehicles and guns of all kinds are crushed as by a giant hand. Working in closer support of the advancing Canadian Army, the Air Force displays uncanny skill in eliminating masses of densely packed enemy transport. The road back to Nazi land is a bloody one. The escape route across the River Seine has been under aerial fire for some time. With the majority of the enemy eliminated from West Bank pockets, Royal Canadian engineers hastily devise methods of ferrying equipment to the far bridgehead. Modern motorized craft are used to speed pursuit. Working night and day, bridging companies throw great pontoon bridges across the Seine. They are capable of carrying even our heaviest armor. With bridgeheads firmly established, the main body of Canadians pours across the Seine at El Bois. Swinging to the left, the axis of advance moves to the famed city of Joan of Arc, Rouen. Bypassed by Canadian armor in its ceaseless pursuit of the German 7th Army, Rouen is invested by infantry in light friend carriers. The war-scarred Rouen Cathedral still points a spire to the sky, as though pronouncing a benediction. Canadian troops hurry forward on their mission of retribution. Great rejoicing are found everywhere in the liberated city. Crowds go wild as the whole town turns out to express their joy at deliverance. as feeling runs high against those people who forgot they were French. They are shorn and branded. Meanwhile, Canadians press forward on their urgent mission of liberation, leaving behind the cheers of liberated Rouen.